All right, so our project is set up like this at this point. There's still more to do, more to learn, but we've learned a lot. If you look back at things, right, we've installed WordPress from scratch, we've added themes, we've played with plugins and widgets, we've added pages and posts and media, we've done a lot. Remember, all of this that we've talked about these four weeks are on my YouTube channel. If you need the address again, see me, but every week I've put up the video, so you can always review them. What I want to do now is I want to one more time to archive the site and then we'll talk about we're working right now in a development environment, in a testing environment. Let's say our site is ready to go live. I want the world to see it on victorsbakery.com. So I'll address that a bit. But first we need to make a duplicator archive. So let's, uh, if you're not in your dashboard yet, go back to your dashboard and let's go to duplicator packages. Uh, yeah, most likely because you want to take all the work you've done with you today home or else it'll go away. Select duplicator packages. Currently there are no packages, so select at the top create new. We've seen this before. Um, my requirements say pass. If any of yours say warning, you want to pay attention to what the warning is. But if it's a warning, most likely you'll be okay, so you want to proceed. If it says a fail, okay, then that definitely needs to be dealt with before you can create an archive. And it really depends on what your setup is, if this will warn you or fail you. Hopefully you get a pass. So it asks for the name of your archive, it's just today's date and the name of your file, that's fine. And then on notes, you can write whatever you want here. This is, uh, I think what I'll write here is, after all updates, for example, WordPress 4.0, after, um, what else did we do, added um, the social media widget and any other notes you want to write here whatever you whatever you want to write what is, what's in this archive what's the purpose oftentimes what I do is before I did the WordPress 4.0 updates uh, I archive my clients sites and write before WordPress 4.0 download it and save it in a secure place, do the updates, test the site, and then if something's broken, I I resurrect the, the site, and it takes me back to before the update. Uh, so this is good here. I'll click Next. It's going to scan the site one more time to show you if there's any issues. All of these say good. So build, <coughs> and once the build is uh, complete, you want to click to download both the installer and the archive file. I'm going to save those on my desktop in a new folder called um, September 26th. I'm going to click to download them, let them download. Click to download. And then when they download, they go to my desktop. So I'll put them into the September 26th folder. The September 26th folder, uh, you should create it on your desktop. 
or just some of this. So if you would like a copy of my project as I completed it, I just put it into the network folder with today's date. Yeah, you should be able to drag and drop any file. So from the desktop, I dragged it into my folder. And so at this point, I've made an archive of my site. Those two files are my site completely. Uh, if you're having trouble before you leave, call me over and I'll help you out. But uh, at this point, I'm done with my project. I'm going to talk about then... Um, getting this live because all the work that we've been doing has been in a testing environment. It's been on my computer, on my laptop or my desktop. No one has access to it. No one out on the internet, I mean. Uh, eventually I want this to be up on victorsbakery.com. So let's switch gears at this point. If you would like, you can follow along here. I'm going to click up on Howdy Admin Log Out. I'm done working for the day. And I'll give you some examples of uh, hosting providers. Uh, one of the big ones is GoDaddy.com. So to get your own little piece of the internet, you need to pay some company some amount of money because they all vary. Uh, apparently, I'm seeing here on GoDaddy, they're saying you can get a sweet deal, $1 per month, to get your own little piece of the internet. And to have your own website, you need two things. You need, you need uh, the domain name and hosting. The domain name is going to be your .com, victorsbakery.com or .net or .org. There's a bunch of ones, .co. I think there's .biz now, or .biz or something. There's a lot of new ones out there. A lot of them. There's .guru, .website. There's lots of them out there nowadays. So if someone took your .com, you could probably get victorsbakery.biz or .shop, whatever whatever is available nowadays. So you want a domain name, that's one thing, and you pay for that usually on a yearly basis. You can choose to buy this for one year, two years, ten years, keep that name, or else you know, you might have bought it for one year, you didn't renew your subscription, and then someone else snaps it up. And now they've got it. And there's very little recourse to deal with that, except going perhaps through the courts and spending a lot of time and money trying to get your name back. So it's happened to me a few times to my clients that they have um, wanted a name that their company has had for 20 years, but they never bought it on the web, and now someone else has it, and they're not going to get it because someone else is using it. Is it a recourse if this has been well established? There could be, but that's what I'm saying. You need to possibly go to court, and that might be expensive. And oftentimes, because the internet, the web, is all over the world, someone might have bought the name in Germany, and how are you going to take someone from Germany to court in the U.S.? So... Unfortunately, it could, get, it could get tricky. 
Um, but you don't need a .com. You could have a .net, .org, .whatever. My company a while ago, uh, I've, I've had vmcinc.net for a long time, and uh, for over a decade. And um, in the beginning, I wanted to get vmcinc.com because everyone knew .com. But back in those days, .com was more expensive than .net. And I was just starting off in this world, and I couldn't afford the extra $5 a year. <laughs> So I went with .NET, and then for several years I've had .NET, and I said, well, let me see about getting .com now that I have a little more money. Someone else had, had snapped it up. Someone else had bought it. And so it would say at the bottom of their website, this domain is for sale. So I just wanted to check, what are they, what are they charging for? So I clicked, and it said, uh, please uh, request to buy this domain. Uh, bids under $500 will not be considered. So... If you really need your name, make sure you get it early on. If someone took it, there's a plenty of other names that you could use. The other part is the hosting, which is which is the um, which is also known as the the FTP or the server space. This is the basically the hard drive where you upload everything. This is the hard drive where you upload your installer file, your, uh, your archive zip file, where you upload your pictures. It's where you upload everything. And this also usually includes the, uh, the database, which is the PHP my admin that we're using. So those are the two pieces to be online. You can just buy the domain name, but then there's no place to upload anything to. That's the hosting. You'll notice that in this here it says hosting and SSL. SSL is security. You know that um, security certificate. You know when you go to your bank or just about any website where you have to log in you see a little lock on the top corner of your web browser that shows that the site is secure by default your site is not secure if you do set up a system to log in that password will go naked through the internet to let someone log in if you want security so that it's all encrypted which you probably do then the SSL is another addition that you that you buy. We'll see prices in a moment. But at the minimum, you need the domain and the hosting. And if you're going to deal with some sort of logging, login scheme, or e-commerce capabilities, most likely you also want the SSL, the security certificate. Are you choosing uh, web hosting or WordPress? I'm not quite there yet. So some of these prices, they tell you right on the home page here, huge savings, $2.99 for a .com for the first year. And then oftentimes the regular price is about $14.99, $15.99, $20, it depends. Uh, this company, GoDaddy, is one of the big ones. Another big one you could look into is Bluehost.com. <coughs> This one says the best web hosting, starting at $3.95 a month. And each one is going to sell you the same thing, domain and hosting and SSL. Their prices are going to vary significantly, perhaps. Their service is going to vary significantly. Nowadays, because WordPress is so ubiquitous, you're going to see more and more something like perhaps a website builder or a, or a WordPress um, easy shopping cart and all of that and unfortunately this is this is where sometimes I can't quite give you all the answers um, in a lecture it depends on what you're trying to do uh, because you can buy for example this website builder but I sort of feel I I would not buy that one the website builder in my experience with GoDaddy, has been a very simple and straightforward type of website for most people that don't need 
very much complication. But that oftentimes locks you out of using the full-featured, full-power WordPress. So depending on the provider, they might call it the website builder, some might call it the easy optimized hosting, I don't know. Each one's a little bit different. Every time I set this up for a client, I have to go in and look at what deal are they offering that day, what services are, are they offering, and then make the choice. <clears throat> We're seeing the prices vary. This is a dollar per day for these features, but maybe it's not what I need. Over here, I'm seeing $3.95 a month, but does that mean the domain and the hosting? or just the domain, or maybe just the hosting, or do I have to buy this for a two-year contract? It varies. Another big name is oneandone.com. So oneandone.com, they all do the same thing. You search for a name, you get some hosting, starting at 99 cents for the first year, your .com. Nowadays, as part of your hosting, you get access to WordPress. Uh, Drupal, Python, all of this advanced stuff. I remember when I started with GoDaddy 2001, which is, you know, that's 13 years ago. I remember when I started with them, it was so limited. First of all, WordPress didn't even exist. And there were different tiers of services, and the more you paid, the more services you got. And eventually, because now someone else came along and they offered a little bit more for a little cheaper, GoDaddy has to match it, and then GoDaddy comes along with some feature, and then Bluehost has to match it. And now they're all like, basically anything that you pay, anything that you want to pay, you're thinking now more of budgets rather than services, because every one of these is going to give you access to WordPress and databases and shopping carts and tech support. But it's about how much you're, you're willing to pay. And there are different tiers. I'm looking at one and one host, and it says uh, web hosting with Linux, web hosting with Windows, WordPress hosting. Again, there's I can't answer every question about every provider. It's up to you to decide. I want to go with Bluehost, and then it's up to you to research, or you or I can help you out. What does what does Bluehost have, and what do I recommend? Uh, you're often going to see when you're choosing hosting. Do you want Linux hosting or Windows hosting? Well, I want Windows because I'm on Windows. No, you want Linux hosting. It's not the kind of computer that you have. It's the kind of computer that your website is going to run on. And I want my, my website to run on Linux computers because you get all of these features. You get WordPress and Magento and MySQL and Python, all of this, all of this software. The Windows version has some versions of some of this software, but the Linux one is the one that gives you the full capabilities. So if it asks you, I want to buy some hosting, and then somewhere here it's going to tell, it's going to ask you, Windows or, or Linux? Choose Linux. Compare plans. <coughs> Depending on the provider, then, for example, here under GoDaddy, they've recently moved over to something very cool called uh, C panel, uh, which is a which is a your your control panel, your your back end, uh, where you manage all of your disk space and all of that stuff. Uh, but then you've got the choice of economy, deluxe, or unlimited, and then corresponding prices. Uh, most likely, just start off with the economy tier, and you should be pretty well off because again, they're all competing with each other. They're one of them at some point might be very limited in economy, but when another company puts everything under economy at the same price, they've got to put everything under economy as well. So if you're looking at hosting and you've got tiers, go for the lowest tier, start off with it, see how it works for you, and then if you need more, then upgrade. <coughs> So 
So then you get in, into other things like, uh, again, this is uh, this is under GoDaddy. You got website builder, managed WordPress, and virtual private servers. Uh, so this one's a dollar per month. This one's a dollar per month. This one's thirty dollars per month. Well, the thirty dollar per month one is that you get more capabilities, faster servers, and just more capabilities. But you pay definitely a lot more for it. Once your site starts to rake in the money and gets very popular, that's when you want to upgrade to the larger packages. But the basic package should should be all that you need. And I would not recommend to use one of these pre-made website builders or even a managed WordPress site, simply because I know that website builder in GoDaddy is very limited. You're not going to be able to put WordPress on it. So avoid the website builder in GoDaddy. The managed WordPress, I have not used it myself to really give an opinion, but when students come in that already have it, sometimes they can't do exactly what, I, what I'm doing in the full-featured WordPress. And usually you have two options, a managed WordPress that holds your hand a lot, and the full-featured WordPress. I would recommend the full-featured one. It is going to be more complex, but it will let you do more. I'm going to see here under one and one, what do we have under web hosting? Again, it tells you unlimited web space, Linux or Windows server, unlimited websites. Hey, unlimited websites, that's better than the one website on economy on GoDaddy, perhaps. Features at a glance. <coughs> Yes. You have mentioned before, I think, um, WordPress.org versus WordPress.com. Mm -hmm. and .org is the, is the free one? Yes, but you don't really do anything there except read the manual. WordPress.org is just a tech support site. You don't install your site there or anything. You just go read the manual here. WordPress.com is a place where you can set up a website, but that gives you a very basic version of WordPress. It does not allow you to install any plugins. So we cannot add the shopping cart plugin that we're going to talk about next month, that social media um, plugin, or some other features. So right here, you can create your own site, but the other problem is now you're going to have victorsbakery.wordpress.com, not victorsbakery.com like you can get from Bluehost. So WordPress.com is a good way to get your feet wet with WordPress, but it's very limited. You really want to pay for any of these providers, and they all provide you comparable features with a huge variety of prices. Yes? Um, are any of those service um, packages ones that you can put more than one website on the server, or do you usually have to get at the minimum, what you can do, all of these provide this, where let's say I've got victorsbakery.com. That's my main site. I can set it up so that I also have victorsbakery.com shop. And that's a completely different site. victorsbakery.com puppies. And that's my puppy clothes shop. You just don't list those in your menu, then you just... Exactly. Okay. They are separate so entities. you actually had a different, you know, completely different... Yeah, Victor's, victorspuppies.com, then you would need, depending on the plan. Okay. If you notice on GoDaddy, it says you can have one website at a time. Oh, okay. okay. And then over on here, I think they said unlimited oh, okay. on one and one. So if you wanted... If you wanted your, your own name like that, right. then it's unlimited, the server space. But you still have to buy the domain. Okay. You still have to buy the domain when you, whenever, you, whenever you want to have one of these sites. Can yes. I make a comment? Uh -huh. A blue host, you can have one hosted site, and then it's called add-on domains, and they will show up as 
victorspuppies.com and we'll be an add-on domain to your primary domain so you pay for one hosting and then you can have multiple websites. Yeah. Or is that a subdomain? It's not a subdomain, it's called an add-on domain. Okay. There's a difference between the two. Oh, okay. So you see, um, I've used GoDaddy for a lot of years, and, and I've used Bluehost a bit, and, I, and I've used um, another one is a hostmonster.com. I use that one. So they all have comparable features, some better than others, and the prices are just very com uh, competitive as well. So they, all of these also try to uh, give you tech support or, or live chat at the moment when you're trying to make the decision. So you can live chat with them, not commit with anything, make notes, which gives you a better result, and then, uh, and then uh, pull the trigger and then get your own .com. Uh, and that's basically the big idea that you need one of these companies to give you some sort of space on the internet. And once you have that, then you could put your site up there and people will come to your site. When we come back on the next class next month, we will continue to work on web server because I'm not going to ask you to pay you know, even a dollar a month. I'm not going to ask you to pay for any of these services, and I don't want to tech support all of your particular accounts. I can always help you, but uh, that's why we're all going to be using web server so that we're all kind of working on the same page. So there's a lot of them out there. If you're currently using one and it works for you, keep using it. Uh, if you want to find out a, about another one, uh, perhaps ask people that have used these other services and ask them how do they like it. Yes? So let's say I set up the domain name and then set up, how do I link my files to That's out of our scope. I can't talk about that right now. It's, that takes too long. But uh, it, my handout number four tries to explain a little bit about how to do that, and it is a technical thing, but I just can't lecture about it because everyone's a little different. If you follow my instructions, it'll help. So the, uh, the class that follows is going to be our advanced class. I'll talk about that in a moment, but any other general questions?